Good evening, everybody, and you're all very welcome to our um, European Greenleaf Programme webinar series. Uh, we're delighted to have the Rediscovery Centre here with us again, and we're delighted that Aaron Murphy has joined us. Um, Aaron had joined the Rediscovery Centre in January 2020 as the new Rediscover Fashion Programme Manager. She has extensive experience in industry, in both fashion and costume design, and as an educator. She's committed to working with designs, designers and creatives and producers that create garments and homeware using the circular economy. And through Rediscover Fashion and the Rediscovery Centre, Aaron provides training to both local people long term unemployed, as well as offering a range of sewing and upcycling workshops to the general public and organisations. This is another event that celebrates National Reuse Month which we're delighted to be a part of this year in Limerick City and County Council. So Aaron, we're delighted to have you here and I'll hand over to you. Just Aaron, if you will, uh, Aaron, if you want to mute your microphone, please. Yes, <laughs> forgot about that. Thank you very much. Now that it's great to be here. I'm delighted to be here. Um, it's great to be here as part of Reuse Month and I am going to be giving you guys a workshop on um, slow fashion and capsule wardrobe. So um, I'll just give you a brief introduction to me. My name is Aaron Murphy. I am the program manager of uh, Rediscover Fashion. Um, I started it in January 2020, so just not not there a year yet. But um, I'm delighted to be there. It's a wonderful place to work and um, it's a great kind of organization to be part of promoting circular economy um, and sustainable fashion. So this is just an overview of the workshop presentation that I have for you tonight. Um, I'm gonna give you an introduction to the Rediscovery Center and the work we do in Rediscover Fashion. Then just an overview of uh, fashion and the environment, the impacts, um, and then circular, the circular economy um, in terms of fashion. And then we'll go into um, greening your wardrobe and um, kind of top tips for, for creating your own capsule wardrobe. And then we'll have a little bit of time for questions and answers at the very end then. Okay. So the Rediscovery Centre is the national centre for the circular economy in Ireland. It is a creative space connecting people, ideas and resources. Um, it hosts Four social enterprises, um, Rediscover Furniture, Rediscover Paint, Rediscover Cycling and Rediscover Fashion. It also has an eco store where the, everything that's made in the workshops in the social enterprise workshops is sold through the eco store and also um, other items that um, are ethically sourced uh, are sold through the eco store. The building itself is um, uh, the old boiler house from the Ballymun Flats. So we're situated in Ballymun. So the building itself is the old boiler house from the, the Ballymun Flats. Um, they were going to knock it down actually. And um, the uh, Rediscovery Centre approached them, um, the City Council, and asked if we if we could um, actually use the building and, uh, and create a, the centre there. Um, so the building itself is... Uh, Kind of a 3D textbook um, for a sustainable living and for the circular economy. So it's it's a place where everything is put into practice, um, from the heating system to the lighting system, the solar, solar panels. There's a a green wall. It's kind of showcasing um, different examples of how you can uh, apply different sustainable methods to building. Um, so here is our. Director Sarah Miller, who will uh, introduce it to you. This is a little video to watch. Is that working? Rediscovery Centre is a creative space connecting people, ideas, and resources. Basically, we are a creative social enterprise and we support research and education for the circular economy. So basically, we're an education and research centre and we're the umbrella organisation for four social enterprises. 
rediscover furniture, rediscover fashion, rediscover paint and rediscover cycling. Each of our social enterprises use waste as a resource. They provide opportunities for training and employment for local people. And they also inspire a new way to live, a more sustainable way to live. And that's really what we're about, is creating opportunities for the circular economy to develop and to kind of nurture those opportunities. Circular economy is all about creating value. It's about making things last. It's about creating opportunities for reuse, adding value all the time, looking at reuse as an opportunity um, with respect to job creation, with respect to the diversion of waste materials from landfill, and really looking at how we can upcycle, redesign, reuse, remanufacture, um, and look at the way that we work with materials and resources um, in a really environmentally conscious way. Well, I think what makes this building so unique, I mean, you see it from the second you step in, it's just an incredible layout in the building. It's, it's just so airy and open. And then there's all the sustainability happening that you don't even see. It just looks like the average building, but it's just incredible. There's hemp concrete, there's a green roof, and it's just, it's the only one of its kind in Ireland. And it's just an incredible place to be. So in relation to this building, the whole idea of circularity is about keeping materials in circulation for as long as possible and getting the most value out of those materials. You can really walk around this open space and discover these little nooks and crannies and you know, there's these open panels into the workshops underneath, which is so interesting. You feel like you're also, you have your own space, but you're also completely enveloped into the whole centre, which is excellent. And then there's things like rainwater collection that you can see in the secret rooms. And it's just how everything is designed and laid out so that everything's there, but it's not in your face. It's, it's not obvious. It's not oppressive. But everything has a place and there was a point to everything. It's just incredible. It's so well designed. So we're maximizing material reuse through the programs. We're creating opportunities for employment and training. And then we're also inspiring other people to do likewise. It's just it's just so important for people of all ages to be able to come here and see not only big things that you could do if you're building a big building like this, but small things you could do. You could have a little garden and grow your own in your house. You know, you could change your toilet maybe and use less water. And it's just, I think for everybody, they could take something from a building like this. So there really is something for everyone. Here we have public workshops. We have the cafe, we have the retail space, we have pop desking. We have an event space if you want to host a meeting or run a mini conference. So there's lots of opportunities to engage with the Rediscovery Centre and that's really what we are about. We want people to work with us and to create together a really creative space for the circular economy. There you go. That's a lovely just intro into the building itself because it, it, it is such a intrinsic part of what happens in the Rediscovery Centre. Is It's com all coming from the, the building itself, um, which is a repurposed heating system, So, uh, which I, I think is great. Um, so just to go through the social enterprises that we have, um, as I said, there's Rediscover Furniture, um, we have Rediscover Cycling, uh, we discover paint. We have an education system. Um, sorry, an education department, which provides education to primary schools and secondary schools, as well as third level and uh, community events, and then and then the public coming into the centre as well. So the the teaching and training and upskilling aspect of what the Rediscovery Centre does is really important. And then we come to Rediscover Fashion. Um, so Rediscover Fashion was set up in uh, as a social enterprise where the circular fashion model can be brought to life. And this is done through training um, in the workshop. So um, with the community em employment participants that we're um, uh, upskilling and training so that they can go back into the workforce. Um, we do this through public workshops as well and demonstrations and talks and through developing innovative products that are hi highlighting the circular design principles. Um, there we go. 
my talking points. Um, so a major part of what we do and how we kind of um, participate in the circular economy and rediscover, to fashion, rediscover fashion is that we um, divert textiles from landfill. So we accept donations into our workshop and we use those uh, donated fabrics and textiles and threads and trimmings and everything um, uh, for our design. And we are kind of employing circular design principles in that we're designing from what we have instead of going making a design and going out and getting resources to, to make it. We're um, kind of being informed by the resources that we have in the workshop as to what does what um, products we'll make and what designs we can we can make. Um, so there's just some um, kind of a legacy of amazing uh, fashion collections that have been produced by Rediscover Fashion since 2008, since it was set up. And here is just a few samples of what has been made. Um, just some, we did some lovely photo shoots previously. And this is kind of an iconic image that we that we made. Um, actually, my predecessor, Karyan uh, Morin, designed and made this from uh, an Ikea bag, which is kind of brilliant and kind of um, essentially what we do in Rediscover Centre and what we're trying to promote is um, looking at waste and turning it into a resource instead. So uh, yes, this is a sailboat. <laughs> um, this is a project that we work, we're working on in uh, Rediscover Fashion at the moment. So we are repurposing old sails um, and kind of funneling through them through our design process and our workshop in Rediscover Fashion. And we're making them into these wonderful picker pile bags, which are part of a primary school initiative, which is a litter picking initiative. So um, it's, a, it's a, an amazing thing to be, to be involved with. And it, again, is something that um, kind of showcases what we do in Rediscover in rediscover fashion, sorry, excuse me, um, which is repurposing uh, the old sails from the beautiful sails, uh, yachts, um, and changing them into something that's really, really useful and really positive for the primary school kids that are that are going on litter picking missions with them. Um, sail cloth is really durable, really hard wearing, and it's brilliant for the bags because they're going to get a lot of wear and tear, but you, as you can imagine, not so great if it's going to end up in landfill because it'll it'll last forever, basically. So it's a really great thing to be diverting from landfill. Um, we also, in Rediscover Fashion, run a programme of public workshops. So here's an example of two that uh, unfortunately will have to be rescheduled because of the COVID restrictions. Um, we've been doing a lot of that <laughs> this year, as I'm sure everyone else has. But um, moving online as well so that's that's we're hoping to be able to offer a lot more of the workshops online um so why the circular economy well i was just going to give a brief overview of the fashion industry and the problems inherent in it um fashion industry has grown hugely uh to to this date um just some facts here on um sorry excuse me uh europeans consume on average 26 kilograms of textiles per person per year mainly finished products imported from asia so that is a, a huge amount if you think about how much one t-shirt or one piece of item of clothing weighs um it's a massive industry uh, in the eu alone there are around 171,000 companies in the textile industry employing 1.7 million people in Ireland, the fashion industry represents 3 billion euros and 38,000 jobs. So it is massive. Um, this is just a little graph that shows uh, the growth of clothing sales and the decline in clothing utilization since 2000. Um, so utilization has actually diminished, even though we are making more and more items of clothing. So this is kind of counter counterintuitive in a way. 
um, and the growth of the fashion industry has has grown into the, the fast fashion industry, um, which is the rapid changing of clothing lines and f fashion trends. Um, it promotes increased consumption, reduces the lifespan of clothing, and over half of fast fashion produced is disposed of in under a year. So this in itself is creating a huge problem. Um, it creates a huge problem in terms of uh, the raw materials and resources that it's using. Um, and it also causes huge problems in terms of the, the welfare of the, and the exploitation of the workers who are actually making the clothing. Um, just some facts here, 98 million tonnes in total per year, um, including oil, fertilisers and chemicals, and over 100 billion items of clothing were produced in 2019, which is insane, a lot. So here is, oh. okay, we'll, we'll skip that one. Um, so in terms, of, that was just a short video on, on the, the impact of the, the fashion industry on, on the environment. Um, in those, the pieces that need to be, um, that have been made that need to be produced. So like, pieces of clothing are basically causing a huge amount of um, pollution in loads of ways. In the production, in the dyes, and the chemicals that are put into the, them when they're being produced, in the transport, and in the, um, in the care also even. Half a million tonnes of plastic microfibers are released into the ocean annually from washing plastic-based textiles. So, painting a grim picture here. In Ireland, 2018, textiles, um, there was 80,000 tonnes in household bins. Globally, one garbage truck of textile waste is landfilled or burned every second. 70% of our donated clothes are shipped to Africa for resale in local markets. This again will end up in landfill. Um, so it's kind of, it's, this is a, a kind of crux point of um, donating clothes is that it can kind of give a, be masking the fact that actually we're exporting our waste because it's what can't be used or resold um, in those local markets is actually ending up in landfill in uh, countries that don't have as good an infrastructure to deal with them. So um, they're causing a huge amount of, of pollution um, less than 1% of material used to produce clothing is recycled into new, new clothing. So this is a point where we can definitely improve. Here is one of those vast landfill sites and a, and a depressing fact about what happens to the clothing when it's when it's there. So decomposing clothing releases methane, uh, which is a harmful greenhouse gas and a significant contributor to global warming. warming. Um, there are dyes and chemicals and fabric and other components of clothing and shoes that can leach into the soil and contaminate both surface and groundwater. So this is um, the amount of time that different fabrics take to decompose. So nylon takes 30 to 40 years, cotton takes two to six months, polyester takes 450 years, and leather takes 40 years, wool takes one to four years. So you can see by this that actually the natural fibers are far, far better for the environment. Um, the figure for polyester is kind of scary. So at the moment, um, the fashion industry is based on a linear economy. It goes from the extraction to the production, to the transport, to the consumption, to the waste. Um, and at every point of this linear economy, there is huge implications for the, both for the environment and for the welfare of the people who are working in the industry. 
Um, so this is why it is important to try and look at our behaviors in terms of fashion and try and change them in some kind of way um, that we can help avert the climate crisis that is looming and um, kind of feel like we're doing something positive for the environment. So that's where circular fashion comes in and the circular economy comes in. So instead of it being a linear model, it turns into a circular model um, where the, the, it still is uh, sourced, the, the raw materials are sourced and they're put through a process of circular design, which will look at the entire lifespan of a piece of clothing or a design, um, not just the brief pocket where it um, reaches the shops and is bought by someone and is in a wardrobe for a certain amount of time. Um, circular design looks at um, extending the lifespan of pieces of clothing and giving them more options for their, their afterlife when, when, they're, when they're no longer wanted by uh, the consumer. Um, so the, the circular production, which would be looking after um, the environment in the production methods. Um, then it would go to consumption. And instead of then after the consumption it going into waste, um, the, the fabrics or clothing or textiles will be collected and put back into the economy then as um, being reused and repaired and um, recycled. So diverting from landfill is, is the kind of the aim of the game here. So reuse and repair is it is becoming more and more popular, which is great. And it's one of the things that I love teaching in the in Rediscover Fashion in the workshops and um, passing on the skills to to people who um, who don't have them to how to re repair or even alter or give longer life upcycle, give longer life to their clothing um, is a brilliant thing to be able to do. Um, So yes, the way to combat this all is to reduce, reuse, repair and recycle. But most of all, what needs to be done is that we need to buy less, basically. Um, Vivian Westwood has said, given us this beautiful quote, um, buy less, choose well, make it last, quality, not quantity. Everybody's buying far too many clothes, which I think we all know at this stage is very, true and it's having really serious implications for the, the environment. Um, so this, her words ring true, uh, fast fashion is a huge industry at this stage. Um, consumers spend one trillion dollars on clothing uh, on average per year and around 30% of the clothing in the average wardrobe has not been worn for at least a year. So we're buying more and more and more and we're filling our wardrobes and we're ending up still with this feeling that we don't have anything to wear, which is such a, a kind of, such a contradiction in terms. So all of these reasons uh, are why making a move towards a greener wardrobe is really important. And it's a step that we can all take as individuals to lessen the impact of the fashion industry uh, and the effect it's having on our environment. And this is, um, it's kind of a really important thing to kind of grab hold of because when you're presented with um, like the devastating effects uh, and the negative effects of the fashion industry, it's really, it can be quite overwhelming and it can, pushed you into a, a kind of a realm where it's almost like denial that, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. So you're just going to keep on doing the same thing that you've always done because that's what we're all doing. Um, the overwhelm can make you just feel helpless and powerless also. Um, so kind of bringing it back down to your own behavior and what you can do is a really important thing to do. And it, like, it, while it, at the same time, it is true that a lot needs to happen with the industry itself, but as consumers and as for our part of the, the industry, um, the changes we make can have 
actually a great effect. Um, we can see that with um, the, the growing number of sustainability directors in, in kind of big, big brands. Um, it's becoming a, a huge buzzword and that is because it's becoming more and more important to the consumer. Um, so this is where capsule wardrobe comes in and capsule wardrobe is, is a really great thing because it gives us a starting point to become more aware of our relationship with the clothes we own. Um, with the clothes we buy and the clothes we throw away and our behavior all around that. Um, it gives us a pathway to change our behavior for the better. Starting with our own wardrobes, it encourages us to think creatively about looking good with less. So it's that idea of if you, if you create limitations for yourself or parameters to work within, you actually, you actually are kind of forced in a way to become more creative. Um, so that's, that's the idea of it. So what is a capsule wardrobe? A capsule wardrobe is a collection of a few essential items of clothing that don't go out of fashion, such as skirts, trousers and coats, which then can be augmented with seasonal pieces. So this means that you have a base core kind of a, a collection of clothing that you can swap items in and out of. Um, according to if you want to, if you love pink and pink is on trend and you want that coat, you can swap in and out. It's um, a lot of people can think that a capsule wardrobe is kind of like a fixed state. Um, really a capsule wardrobe can be anything that you want. And the idea of it mostly is just to, to kind of reduce what you own and reduce what you think you might need and reduce um, those impulse purchases that we all make um, and at the same time get you to make the most out of your wardrobe and the most out of your clothes um, and still look amazingly brilliant. Um, so a capsule wardrobe can be anything you want it to be. You can design your capsule, capsule to span the entire year or have one for each season, whatever makes you comfortable. A capsule wardrobe doesn't have to be dull and boring, does it not, nor does it mean the end of being fashionable. Choosing outfits from a smaller amount of clothes will actually make you think more creatively about the combinations you choose. So here is a sample capsule wardrobe. It might not look like much on the page, but when you actually get into the various combinations that you can make um, with this amount of clothing, you'd be surprised by how, um, how much potential there is. So how do you create a capsule wardrobe? There really are lots of different ways to go about it and there aren't any rules. Um, there are some very helpful guidelines and tips that you can, can kind of go by. And there's a, a, a whole rake of um, online resources that will give you different guides that you can try out <clears throat> um, in terms of, you know, rules about how many, how many pieces you should have in your capsule wardrobe um, to what, what kind of rules you should be using or guidelines you should be using to choose the pieces. Um, essentially, you're picking 30 to 50 items of clothing from the clothes that you already own to include in your capsule wardrobe. The number doesn't need to be exact. You might start with a higher amount and find as you get more into your new way of dressing that your capsule wardrobe is made up of less and less clothing. One really useful tip uh, when you're kind of getting into the mindset of the capsule wardrobe is knowing your own style. And knowing your own style, what I mean by this is not uh, kind of looking outwards to the, the um, trends and the fashion trends and the um, whatever's on trend at the moment. It's more about knowing what you feel comfortable in, what you feel good in, um, that you pieces that you like to wear 
so knowing what you what your style is and, and what you will wear is an important thing to kind of keep in mind when you're choosing the pieces that will be in your capsule wardrobe in fact going through the process of creating your capsule wardrobe can really help you hone this down it can really help you get to know your own style there's no point in including something in your capsule wardrobe that you've actually never worn but you really would like to sometime that's not what this is about um this is about creating a, a, kind of a collection of clothing that you will definitely wear and that you will always be able to find something that you can wear in the morning, which is great for uh, time saving. Um, do remember that it's not a static wardrobe. Once you've chosen your pieces, it doesn't mean that you're, that's your wardrobe for life. You can feel free to swap out pieces that you aren't wearing for something new you would like to try out. Um, know your own needs. So another important thing to think about before you're choosing your items for your capsule wardrobe is about your lifestyle and the places you frequent. For example, you may need to include a certain amount of work clothes in your capsule wardrobe. Um, you may need to include, if you go to a lot of functions, you may need to include a lot of dress clothes in, in your um, wardrobe. Just depends what, what, you, how, what your lifestyle is like and, and what will fit it basically. It's also important to think about what time of year it is, although in Ireland with our four seasons in a day this might not be such a clear divide, but it is important to have clothing suitable for the types of weather we will be experiencing. It's also a good point to make here that um, through layering we can use pieces, we can make pieces um, more versatile through layering. So something that you wear in the summer could with a pair of tights or over a pair of jeans or um, leggings or something like that and a big cardigan, it can uh, move into winter, autumn or winter. Um, yeah, layering up is a great tool in this regard. So going to the next one. So as I said, there, there are tons and tons of um, kind of sample guidelines online and various different websites, um, Unfancy, um, The Capsule Project, uh, just to name a couple of them. But um, so you might, if you're, if you're considering the capsule wardrobe, it, it, it would be a good idea to do some research and see which of these uh, people kind of ring a bell with you um resonate in some kind of way what kind of methods they they're using some of them will say there's no rules do whatever you want um some will have a very kind of hardcore approach to like get, actually getting rid of what you what you're not using and and only having those clothes that you choose to be in your your wardrobe i would kind of do it be more inclined to uh encourage a step-by-step -step, uh process with it but that would be more to do with my own personality as well, probably. Um, I can be quite attached to my clothing. So um, what I found really useful was actually to pack some, pack part of my wardrobe away. And if I didn't miss it, then it meant uh, I could pass it on, um, stop it being its owner. <laughs> um, but it depends on what suits you. Um, so this is a sample capsule wardrobe guideline that I, I chose to um, kind of present to you here. So step one is to reduce. Um, our, our wardrobes can be quite bulging um, and we might need to do a bit of uh, a clear out before we can actually see the, the see what we want to um, include in our capsule wardrobe and that can kind of make it easier because it kind of whittles it down a little bit so if you can take a few hours and do a wardrobe clear out of anything you know you definitely won't wear and um, like I said you can pack these away in a suitcase or you can um, gift someone a bag of hand-me-downs or donate them to a charity shop um, or store them away for future upcycling projects which I, I would recommend um, 
so we'll move on to the next one. So then you've kind of got a clearer vision of, of what items of clothing you actually own that you actually would wear. Um, in this capsule wardrobe guideline, they uh, recommended to choose a base wardrobe. And this base wardrobe was different to your capsule wardrobe. So this was your workout wear, your lounging wear, like pajamas and that kind of thing. Um, your layering, so any vests or t-shirts um, that you might wear under things, um, outerwear and formal wear and accessories. So these are kind of, it's a mixture of just your base, what you would be wearing every day um, and your, <clears throat> special pieces. So the formal formal or dressy wear. Um, again, the number of items you choose for each of these categories is up to you. Um, you can choose in between five to 10 and you can choose five and find then that you don't have enough. So you might want to add some more in, which is why I kind of recommend, particularly if you're doing this for the first while, um, not immediately getting rid of everything, but just kind of having a few bits there that you can swap in and out um, until you kind of refine your, your capsule wardrobe for yourself. So then in this example, you would choose your capsule wardrobe. Um, and this is a kind of a useful exercise anyway, I think, is to create outfit categories that are relevant to your lifestyle. Um, so in this example, they had uh, active, the categories were um, active, work, dressy, fun, lounge, and daily. Um, and then the idea is that you will choose nine tops, uh, included dresses there as well, because you might want a dress or two, um, five trousers or skirts and five shoes. And the way to, they kind of suggested a filter to um, make sure or help you choose the right items, because that's only 19 items. Um, so the, yeah, there's a filter um, of how useful each item will be for each of your categories. So I guess the idea there is that you're, you're trying to choose pieces that will work well in a few different categories for you. Also, uh, how well they fit you. Um, there's no point in choosing a beautiful piece that just doesn't sit right. And you kind of, I don't know if you have those pieces that you try on, really would like to wear, but they just don't feel right. So you always take them off again. Um, so they don't belong in your capsule wardrobe. And then the other, um, thing to, to kind of keep in mind is how versatile they are, like how many combinations um, of, can you include them in, in terms of outfits? Um, there's, yeah, you need to kind of be able to wear them in at least three different ways for them to be a useful piece of clothing in your wardrobe. So here is just a picture of kind of an image of another kind of way of organizing or choosing a capsule wardrobe. So there are five um, statement makers, five favorites, 10 foundational pieces, 10 leveled up layers, and 10 shoes and accessories. So altogether, that is 40 pieces. So you can see there's, there's different ways to do it. So it's kind of a matter of, of finding the one that, that suits you best. So I included also uh, a kind of softer versions of the capsule wardrobe. Um, because that kind of whittling your wardrobe down to, to 40 pieces, 50 pieces could be kind of daunting for people. Um, particularly if, the, if, you own, if you're used to owning a lot more than that and having a greater choice um, to choose your outfits from. Um, so the 30, you can, there are kind of shorter challenges that you can do that are still really, really useful to do in terms of um, making you, they're kind of a bit of a, an intervention um, that will make you more aware of uh, 
your clothing and how how much more you have than you need basically so this is one this is the 30 by 30 challenge um so the idea is that you will choose 30 items of clothing um and wear only those 30 items of clothing for 30 days so you'll need to um kind of apply the same principles as the the kind of major overhaul capsule wardrobe you'll need to make sure that they're useful to you that they fit you well that you're happy wearing them that you feel good wearing them and that they're kind of the right pieces for you in terms of practical um, needs. Uh, so the 30 items were to include day wear, uh, shoes, accessories and coats and not include exercise gear, um, sleepwear and underwear. This challenge actually was uh, held by Meath County Council. Um, and they did it in their workplace. And I thought it was a really good uh, idea because they were kind of trying to create um, kind of conversation or generate conversation uh, within their workplace about their, um, their, their behaviors in terms of clothing and, and consuming clothing and fashion. And I thought it was a, a really kind of a positive thing to do. And I think, it could be adopted in, in many places and could create um, great conversation and great kind of awareness. Um, and also kind of doing this fast, obviously when you're doing this, you're not, you're not buying clothes either. So you're kind of uh, doing a little intervention for yourself. Um, and a, a really nice thing that can happen after this then is that um, you can, once, once you're finished is that you return to the rest of your wardrobe and it's like you've gone out on a, on a major shopping spree because you've got all these new things that you can now wear again. Um, so that's a, a really good thing. Then an even shorter thing, which is uh, probably easier for a lot of people to do. And, and again, still would have the same effect, effect in terms of making you that bit more aware of your, your, um, your behavior with regards to fashion. Um, so this is the 10 by 10 challenge and it's 10 items of clothing for 10 days. And the idea is that you pick any 10 items from your wardrobe and use them to create new outfits for 10 days. So I did this with a couple of models. Um, these were the, the pieces chosen by Louise. So that's five and here are the ten outfits and she actually had more that she kind of more combinations that she could have done So it can be fun uh, as well to do a bit of, it's like a bit of um, creative dress up when, you, when you're limiting yourself to these, um, this smaller number of, of clothing is that you, you have to try out different combinations if you want different looks and you might try out things that you've never tried before, you've never thought of before and um, just be getting way more from your clothes, way more value from your clothes and, and um, extending the amount of time you're actually using them for. So this was the um, machine's choice of clothing. So the 10 items there. And I was really happy to include this because obviously fashion is not just for women. So here's a an example of a man's capsule wardrobe, the 10 by 10 challenge. There are even capsule wardrobes for children. I suppose for children, they kind of have their, their capsule wardrobe is, is limited by their, um, their age. So they have their capsule wardrobe for their four to six and seven to eight and nine to ten so that's that's kind of all i have for you today um 
I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. And also just to say the, yeah, the, if you were, want to try any of these um, capsule challenges or even the full on capsule wardrobe um, collection, creating one of them for yourselves, please do, if you have any questions about it, you're welcome to, to um, email me. This is my email address here. So thank you very much. I hope that was enjoyable for you. I hope you learned something. Thanks very much, um, Aaron. That was great. Um, we're delighted to get ideas and, and to, to encourage more thinking around the capsule wardrobe. Um, fashion is a great and it's a fun thing and it's not that we're tr trying to detract from any of that. Um, but we would like to see um, clothes used for longer, um, different types of materials used for clothing. And, and what, what I love about the Rediscovery Centre and in all that you do, it's this challenge of creativity, um, which gets our brains working. And now that we're, and we are, looks like we'll be home-based for quite a bit of time now again this winter, this might be something else to, to try out um, for, for people, for themselves. They can do their own 10 step challenge virtually with friends and family and all the rest of it. It's just a thought. Um, we have a, a couple of questions. Um, one that's come in is, um, what are the most, what is the most sustainable brands or do we know them or what's the best way to get to know them? Yeah, that, that's a very um, kind of contentious question in a way. Um, it's hard to tell and it's something that we actually need to be careful about because the, it, what comes into question is a, a brand's transparency basically because a lot of brands as it's becoming more and more popular and more and more of an issue for consumers which is brilliant um brands are uh, adopting sustainable practice more sustainable practice um they are like zara and h&m are doing the the clothing collections um Primark have a, a whole sustainability kind of um, uh, model that they're working from. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's hard to know. I mean, there are obviously the, the really, really good ones that you can always recommend are like People Tree, um, Patagonia, they're doing really, really great things. Um, basically, if you buy something from them, they, they kind of give you a guarantee that they'll repair it for you for as long as you want, which is brilliant. Fantastic. Um, and a whole different kind of model of, of buying something. You know, you are paying a bit more for it initially, but you are guaranteed that it will last you for a very long time. Very good. Um, so the thing that, yeah, people need to be careful there of is, is kind of, because it's such a buzzword, sustainable clothing, um, environmentally friendly, it, uh, it, it kind of, you have to be careful of a certain amount of greenwashing. So if something has, you know, is made of um, organic pineapple leather or something like that, <laughs> sorry, that's a bit random. Um, it might, you need to actually look at what it's made of because it might be just that only 5% of it is made from that, you know, and it's mixed with polyester then, which because it's mixed, it makes it actually virtually impossible to recycle then, you know, so, it's it, while it's amazing that that brands are moving towards the sustainability and it's becoming more and more important it's um i suppose as consumers something that we need to be careful of that we're uh if we're really truly interested in greening our wardrobe that we're really truly kind of doing a bit of research there's a, a few websites that kind of will give ratings to companies on um on how sustainable they are like the good brand um and there's a few others as well. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers okay. your question. Yeah, and the other one, um, so where are we on donating to, to charity shops? I know a particular person at work and I've admired several fabulous pieces she has and she'll say very quietly to me, actually, I got this in. <laughs> um, very good at selecting pieces, has a great yeah. eye. So charity shops certainly for fashion and that have their place, don't they? They absolutely do. And I am a solid charity shopper. Um, I When I started in the Rediscovery Centre just in January, uh, 
because I was already a solid uh, charity shopper, I've pretty much everything I've I buy and have bought is from charity shops. Um, and it just has been, I just have just kind of grew up with that culture, you know, it wasn't, I didn't have any kind of um, taboo about it ever. And so, yeah, I, I have great things that I found in charity shops, but actually um, I stopped buying things this year because I wanted to go that, st that step further, you know. <laughs> um, sorry, I'll move you because I'm looking down at you. There. Okay. Um, so yes, charity shops are great and you can find brilliant, brilliant things in them. Um, unfortunately, because of the, the kind of rise and the, um, the amount of stuff that's being made because of the fast fashion model, um, the quality of what's being donated there is, is kind of lessening. And one of the things with charity shops is that actually 70% uh, of what the, is donated is actually shipped um, to other countries uh, to be resold in, in local markets, um, in particular uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, so I, as I was saying, as part, as part of the, the um, presentation, um, a lot of that, because of the poorer quality of fast fashion, a lot of that is not uh, fit to be resold in their markets. And even the fact that they're being shipped over there to be resold has actually flooded their, um, their indigenous uh, textile market textile trades you know so it's kind of obliterated them a bit um but because the the quality of the clothing is kind of getting less and less a lot more of what is being shipped there is ending up in landfill over there um which is a huge problem which is why uh the what we do rediscover fashion in terms of the um the public workshops um and that kind of stuff and the the demonstrations um about re all around reuse and repair. So it, if you can do that with your clothing, like as in, if you if anyone does the 10 by 10 challenge or the 30 by 30 challenge, capsule challenge, and you kind of have, you find those things in your wardrobe that actually no way you're not gonna wear them. Um, there's a few like kind of steps that you should try and think about before you even donate them. And donating them is obviously miles better than putting them into, um the bin basically <laughs> it's a hundred times better than than putting it into the bin because you are at least giving them a chance of an afterlife of, of a longer life and and kind of diverting them for landfill for that bit longer which every bit helps you know yes. every little step that anyone takes is is worthwhile absolutely but um yeah if you if you do have pieces that you're not going to wear or you, that you don't like uh, for whatever reason should um or something you could do is think about actually upcycling them, cutting them up, altering them, come like cutting up two pieces and combining them together to make something new. Um, particularly under a six week lockdown that's coming along. Yeah. It'd be a great thing to do. You won't be able to buy anything uh, apart from online, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've had some lovely comments in. Um, thank you for Aaron for all those great tips on rediscovering fashion from Maeve. Uh, really useful info, a good challenge for us all from, I'm guessing it's Aoife, but I'm not sure. It, it It's A, but I know the second name. Um, mm. Also from Sarah and from Rosie Moore, all really thank you for a very interesting workshop. We, we won't keep you now, folks. Our next workshop is on um, climate action and it's with Gavin Hart, um, who uh, he's quite well known here in Ireland for all his work he's done. He works Amazing. with Growth Vision that you you know him, Aaron, do you? I suit. don't know him, no, but but I'm I'm delighted that he's going to be doing it with you. Yeah. 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 So we're looking forward to having Aaron at the next workshop, which uh is the tenth of November, I think. Um good night everybody and thanks so much and a big thank you to Aaron and the Rediscovery Centre. You're doing great work. Keep it up. Thank, thank you very much. I'm delighted. All right. Thank you for joining me. Take care. Bye bye. Take care.